What? Okay, somehow that's not a super surprising. Who's that? The father? Ayo, what's up? We're gonna be checking out Attack on Titan. This is episode 39. It's titled Pain. And so far in season three, we've gotten a direction that I really wasn't expecting so far. We have Levi getting chased by Levi and the new Levi squad, which is like Aaron, pretty much all the characters that survived, John, um, Historia, Connie, all of them are now getting chased by the government and these different political um, factions that want Aaron and Historia alive and um, we're meeting someone of Levi's past. So it has really just taken a direction that I wasn't expecting. And it's actually really intriguing for me to get a little bit more into the, um, I want to say like the politics maybe of this world. Yeah, I think politics is the correct word. I, yeah, like the political aspects of Attack on Titan. Because so far with seasons one and two, it's really just been like, oh my god, there's a Titan. Uh, we have to survive and then there's like oh my god there's like a mystery with this world and we don't know what the what's going on so it seems like we're getting a bit more political with this and we might get a bit more um i'm assuming like ideologies as we go on i expect more to go on with levi and more to go on with erwin in this season and just for more badassery as a whole so his name is kenny the hell my bad kaboom <laughs> that's kind of funny okay so the first thing i noticed is that they're damn we're just straight on going into the action sequence oh, i love this opening i love this opening so much i got a vibe to this opening i got a vibe like a starry night okay whatever so um what i was saying what I was going to say earlier was that um, one of the first things I noticed about Kenny and the rest of the opposing squad is just the difference in their armor. And I'm wondering if that has to do with the fact that maybe they're backed by the government and they're like, you know, like hired by them to like basically assassinate Levi and his whole squad, capture Aaron, capture Historia. I'm sorry, I love this opening. Da, da, da. What's the truth? What's the truth? What's the something? <gasps> oh man, they're gone. Every time I watch these shows, <gasps> Historia, no. Uh, oh, uh, they're gone. They're gone. Every time I watch these shows, I don't know why. I just always root for the background characters to like. <gasps> I just always root for the background characters to survive, but I know it's a lost, um, it's a lost cause in a show like this where, you know, it's apocalyptic. They gotta get the stakes high. Everyone has to die, so they're gonna kill off all these, ba all these like randos. But it makes me very sad. We need justice for them, justice for the background characters. To be honest, ooh, honestly, this is like. Probably one of the first full-on, like, action sequences that Levi's just had all by himself. I know he's had his moments in Season 1, but... Like, this one is just purely, like, levi focus. Oh my! Oh, Yo, is the animation always this smooth? Oh, no. I hope they don't die. I wonder why everyone around isn't evacuating. I'm kind of scared for them. I thought Levi was older. Oh, okay. <laughs> wow. Was not expecting that diss. Wait, I'd actually be so sad if the people from the bar die. Wait, what happened to the guy standing there? What is it? What is it? Oh my god, we're finally going to get backstory on Levi. Oh! 
<laughs> badass. I'm so happy they're not making Levi helpless. Oh my. Wow. Whoa. <clears throat> Wait, yeah, that makes me so happy that they're actually kind of making this like an even matchup between Levi and Kenny. Like, it's not just like a one-sided fight like it always is. Like with the Titans, yeah, it's always a one-sided fight. But Levi are just so cool that, you know... I wonder what his dream is. It must have something to do with everything else. <sighs> oh my! Wow! Oh, I also really like the soundtrack too. Little strings in the background. It kind of has a really different feel from the first two seasons. I know this is only the second episode of season three, but already I'm kind of getting that the vibe has kind of shifted. Not necessarily in a bad way at all. Seasons one and two are very grand in setting up like, you know, like the Titans are bigger than life and everything like that. But this one feels just a little bit more grounded. <laughs> oh, John. <laughs> no. Okay, I don't think John is dead. Wait. Is John dead? Why did I second question myself? I don't think John is dead. I'm forgetting the name of Lord Rice. Rice? Rice? We've definitely met that Lord before. I just don't remember. I want to know that too. I want to know what you're planning to do, Erwin. Oh, that's what makes him really good as a leader. That's what makes him so interesting. Oh, did Armin kill her? I think Armin killed the girl. <laughs> Armin getting his first kill over Jean is crazy. Sean, you need to step it up. Actually, I don't remember at all if Sean killed someone, but Sean, you need to step it up. I really like uh, Armin's development. He is not useless at all. I don't know. I definitely vaguely remember as I was getting into anime and just you know, hearing all the discourse and surroundings of Attack on Time that people would complain about how useless Armin was, in the beginning at least. I'm pretty sure they liked him as the show went on, but to me, he's never been useless. I always felt like his trajectory as a character going onwards was like, he was just kind of a slow burn. Like, not everyone can be Mikasa right from the start and just like kill everyone like that. They were wrong to complain about him. Yo, because you're cool now. Damn. They were all hesitating. So out of the three of them, Armin was the one that didn't hesitate. So sad. I I don't know. The vibe. The vibe of season three is just like it's so different. I kinda like it though, because I feel like we're getting like different characteristics to these characters that we haven't seen. <laughs> Who's he? Oh, he was the one um that initially captured them. They're bringing him up again. I do. I do vaguely remember this. What is the Reeves company? <clears throat> so they're like the transport systems. Wow. Sorry, nothing much to say. It's just like... It just keeps going. What is it? What is it? Oh my god. 
Can we know? Can we know? Can we know? Oh my god. Eaten by who? By who? Why can't they just say? Ugh, why they gotta play like that? Oh my god. I forgot that they keep teasing that. Sorry, I kind of forget who that was. Oh, okay. Okay. Wow, so all in a matter of minutes, Reeves just turned on from the government side towards Levi's. They definitely won't make it, both of them. <laughs> she is not a novice. <laughs> yeah, my God. <laughs> Dude, this is all happening so fast. I feel like in the span of this episode, just what just happened? They're on the run from the government. Now they're like saying they're criminals. They like turn the tides against them. What happened to Kenny? That fight lasted like three minutes. I think this is all a good thing, by the way. Yeah, it was like Armin just killed someone. Ooh, they're like torching this guy. Sorry, this like makes my nails feel so wear. Sorry, I I looked at his hand. I can't. Why out of all the scenes, bro? This scene. What? I f oh, hold on. Okay, well, I definitely don't believe in that, but, like, okay. It's because the first interior squad dirtied our hands to protect the peace. So, who? A teacher too smart for their own good? A stupid couple who tried to fly? Who are? Who's the teacher? Is the teacher Aaron's dad? Maybe, I'm guessing, I'm guessing. There's the person that tried to fly? And I, I felt like those are important, but I can't pinpoint like any of this. Okay, so the king is like promising the people something, or at least like people that um, they're manipulating to work with something. And then maybe Reiner, that's a part of like Reiner Numir's group too. That's why Reiner was manipulated as well. <laughs> what will happen? What? Oh, are they lying? What? Wait. <laughs> what? Okay. Wait, that's crazy. Who's race? Wait, I okay. I need to look up who this is because We've met race before, right? Have we? Have we not? Why do I not remember this guy? Oh my god. This episode was like... Oh my god. Well, we saw that coming. Who sold him out? What the fuck? Dude, I'm so dumbfounded. Oh, so they killed the dad first. I low-key thought they would kill the son first. Who is it? Rice? His store? Oh! What the f- What?! Okay, somehow that's not a super surprising. Who's that? The father? Okay, whoa, whoa. I felt like 1,000 things happened in that episode. Let me just break it down 
in my mind right now. So in the beginning, you had Kenny. You have Kenny and his squad who was trying to kill Levi, right? Um, they managed to fight back. Okay, they turned the tides on them with the merchant. They were able to torture that military police guy that was working for the king. And then through that... Oh, Armin killed someone too. Armin killed someone. So that was another monumental moment in this episode. And then we find out that the true successor to the throne is Historia, which, to be fair, is not really a big... Sur like, it shouldn't be a really big surprise considering the way that they've built her up as a character to be. She's always had... She's like a softer character with a lot of presence around her. She kind of does act like royalty if we think about it, like how royalty would act in this situation. So it's not super shocking. I think it's mind-blowing that we were getting all of this at once, first of all. Um, I kind of like it, too. I kind of like that the pace just kept going and going. It didn't... This is like the first time I felt like it didn't really stop to make you think about it. I mean, sure, things have happened all throughout AOT that have been crazy wild, but I always felt like there was like this tension and this buildup, and there was like these monologues to go along with it, and we really felt the emotions and... Um, tensions of every single one of these events that have happened but with this one um they kind of played at an angle where it was just like go 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 this is what's happening right now all these revelations were coming at once um and i kind of like that change of pace too as well so obviously this is um when i said in the beginning of the video that it was going to be really political i assume we're just going to fully go into this type of story so we're going to like get a lot more of erwin and the king and then potentially a bit more about levi's past but i see um aaron and them and their journey not necessarily i don't see it taking like a back seat per se but like it'll just slow down in comparison so that we get more world building in aot and i feel like that's what's been missing a little bit not necessarily missing, but it's just like, it would be nice for it to be explored further. So yeah, I, my thoughts on this episode is I thought it was great. I thought it was a completely like left field type of show. I'm getting the tone. I'm getting a good tone of season three and how it'll, how it'll go. Oh, sorry. I'm going to repeat how I said that. It kind of felt a little different than that. And it also felt very different, obviously from season one. So I'd say every single one of the three seasons have had kind of a different like tone and feel to it and i'm really liking where this one is taking i think this is the perfect time to do it as well um it's like in the middle of the story i assume we're gonna get way more action season three part two or like um final season obviously but i think this is the moment in the show for us to get all of these different revelations and characterizations and that's it that's all i gotta say um I'm really enjoying this. I'm actually really looking forward to the next episode. I'm really excited. The next episode I'm seeing from the title is called Old Story. So I'll see you in that, I guess. Bye.